treat. If you're in the hallway, come in, get in here. There's a real treat coming on stage. It's not every time that this gentleman gets a solo panel. And uh, he's such a interesting person, with a wealth of knowledge and talent, and a hell of a guy to boot. We just love him, and I know you do too. Please give it up for David H. So I just want to be sure that when Taylor says we are never, ever, ever, ever getting back together, she means she, she is not leaving the door open in any way. Okay? You can call me and tell me you love me, but it's so frustrating, like never, ever getting back together. I, I am in the camp of never say never. I believe in forgiveness and redemption. And what if Taylor Swift meets a guy at a curly launch wheel in Northern Canada 10 years from now? And she falls in love with the same guy again. And she'll be regretting that song as long as that. <laughs> Keep your heart and your minds open, people. Right? As a, as a guy who played catch, I believe in forgiveness and redemption. That's all I'm saying. But I, I didn't want to add on the Swifties out there. You know, I hear, I hear her, her hard line. Are we having a good time so far, people in D.C. and the region? I'm having a great time. Y'all are so nice and so fun. 
I, uh, I thought I'd dress up a little bit, you know? Like dinner tonight. This is kind of a weird, uh, this is kind of a weird weekend for me because I'm usually here Friday night and Saturday. I'm usually gone right now, having quarter, having dinner with Davey tonight. Then have a costume wardrobe change. So I'm gonna get the tux early. Um, also, who here has seen me and Adam do panels before? Okay. So we're, I'm, with, I'm missing my favorite white man, obviously. Uh, he's filthy. I don't know if you know anything about Adam Fergus, but he's, he, and he gets away with that, that beautiful, charming Irish accent, right? It's like, they, everything sounds better in Gaelic. You know? Oh, they fucked his and they fucked their hair, but they fucked their hair. So, I'm going to take a poll. Uh, I tend to be the more civilized, kind, genteel, hallmark guy. Um, So I just want to buy the room. Do you want a more sort of laid back, kind, wholesome Hallmark panel, or do we want the sort of filthy double entendres that we're used to having? Yeah. Hallmark. Okay. Um, perfect. So look, at, there's so many people in line already. This is going to be a fun time. So let's go. Let's get to questions. The better your questions, the better this panel. Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, well, thank you. Um, may I out you as my pro bono publicist right now? So, the reason I'm here, because I was a last minute replacement, but it was all because of you guys. So many people emailed in and texted and everything in creation to have me here, so I wanted to thank you. And it was uh, led by amazing people on Facebook, like Charlotte over here. So, I really, I, I would not be here without you, so I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. So, thank you. So, yeah, my only question. Am I happy to be here? Is Tyler happy to have that mic? Hey, Tyler! Can you say hi, baby, Tyler? This is Tyler's first convention, by the way. Well, not technically. The first one he'll remember? Because how old is he now? Two? So he may still dump the memories, but the trauma will last forever. The internalized trauma. So this little cutie over here, um, saw a picture of me. I was, I was on Cameo talking to Charlotte over here. And uh, Cameo is one of these things where you can actually have live calls with me now, and sometimes we would have some really fun live chats. So it's like a convention in a phone. Um, and apparently, when he sees my picture, he goes, Die, Davey, die. <laughs> so, not Team Catch. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have. We have a supernatural fan and catch hater in the making. I welcome your hate, young lad, and we'll see you at photos. Bye, buddy. I'll see you at photos. Bye! Yes. Maybe I'm making it gross. See? Forgiveness and redemption. Mouths of babes. You take this lesson. <laughs> Hi! No, we'll just you, go, hi, baby. Everyone needs to pour the question goes, hi, baby. <laughs> no, she, I refuse. I will never, ever, ever say hi, baby. In a big <laughs> Shoot me in a moment. Shall I go to the other side? interesting, bigger fish to fry, right? No, actually, I... It was a whole chaos. I was trying to find somebody. It, it was a whole... Right. So, Alcohol and cocaine will do that. <laughs> you know, you're, uh, you're already, like... Am I you're, this close? Am I this close? Am you, I this close? You replaced Tim Amundsen, so I'm, I'm a little... But you're this close. Tim's much better than me, I agree. <laughs> I, listen, I mean, there's the A team, and then there's the B team, and then there's the Farm League, and then there's, I don't know what those, like, bumpkins on, like, a cornfield somewhere, like, where I'm from. That's, I'm, I'm getting called up. I'm in the majors. I get it. I'm punching above my pipe class. And this is my birthday convention. Hey, happy so, birthday. Thank you. Um, so, when I get my book, I get to put it off with you later. My question is, do you have a moment or something that happened at a con with a, with a, um, one of us that was essentially sweet or that you remember and talked about with and 
Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, this, this is not pandering at all, but um, I literally have like a bucket load at, at every convention. I think one of the, one of my favorite things, and I've said this in my dinners and my meet and greets and stuff, so I'll say it uh, more publicly. One of my favorite stories I get is, is all of you saying to each other, I found one of my best friends here at this convention waiting in line for a photo op or a autograph. And now we've, we've stayed in touch online. Like that still gives me chills. It really does. Because this family is so much more than the show. Even the show is pretty awesome. We're all friends. <laughs> but um, what this energy of, in real life, I call it the, the extended family reunion, you were all meeting the cousins, the second and third cousins. But like people internationally, I, I know people tell me stories like, oh, we were at one of your panels in Germany or in Italy or Paris, and now they're friends with someone from Ohio and, and Australia. That kind of global connection through an enthusiasm over a TV show and an art form is really special to me because I love those humanistic, true connection stories of intimacy and, and best friends. So and I, I literally have like a, a boatload of them for being having been part of this for the last five years. No, five years. And then the other thing which was really cool was, was doing cameo and, and really having some really meaningful like conversations through lockdown and the pandemic when we're all feeling very isolated and having that really one-on-one -on -one connection like I have friends and people I've talked to now in Australia and in Germany and all over the world Russia like and just you know like so it's when you when you meet someone where they live as an individual and, I, and that's what I love about this uh, fandom too or family rather is everyone is so unique and individual and we accept everyone for who they are and where they live right here, right now. And give yourselves a round of applause for so that special, hallowed, sacred space. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I got a boat load, but, uh, but I think that's the general overarching thing is watching friendships bloom and, and seeing, seeing the love, really. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, see, that's the hallmark. That's the hallmark answer right there. See? Forgiveness and redemption, everybody. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to sign up for the first night of Wayne before yesterday night. Thanks again. Oh, my goodness. She rocked living on a prayer last night. She was bringing, bringing a house down. You are such a nice guy. I really, really enjoyed it. And just how much has just been fantastic for me. I don't know if you know, but I'm from Germany. And okay, I travel we'll talk. I can, I can hear the accent. Yeah, 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 I traveled like 4,000 miles to get here. And it. it's yeah. just fantastic. Everything is so cool. Everyone is so kind here. And thank you for everything. Well, and welcome. And we're going to give yourself a round of applause again. Have you gone to any of the German conventions? Yes, I've oh. been to the Purgatory Convention in May, actually. Oh, okay, perfect. Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks. Welcome. Welcome, Todd. Welcome. And uh, my question is, if you had the chance to play a character in a video game, in which one would you like to be in? Oh. Have they ever made a supernatural video game? Have they ever tried to? Is that something there would be an appetite for? Yes! <laughs> what's, 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 what's going on, WB? You're leaving money on the table. Like, how would you, obviously, I, I, I would I'd love there to be a supernatural video game and, and to play catch. I would love to, to step back into that, that guy's voice again and, uh, and, you know, cause lots of mischief and sort of, what, it'd be like Grand Theft Auto in, the, in, the, in Baby, right? You would kind of be like, but murdering monsters so you wouldn't feel as ethically bad about it? You know, you know Grand Theft Auto, it's like, I, I've watched people play it and I was like, this is Sure. Make it a VR. <laughs> there you go. Um, but if I was going to be uh, another character in a video game, I'd love to do, have a chance to go back. Um, well, because I, I think I also would make a much better, um, you know, not, we, we, we're sort of Batman out of this, but who, who saw the Batman? Did we love the Batman? Did we love the Batman? Emo, yeah? Emo Batman? I love him. 
But I was like, how much more can you do with the Batman story now? It's sort of just become art direction and, uh, and uh, beautiful, incredible cinematography and art direction. But it's like, you can't really do that Genesis story again. I would also love to just play like a goofy little animated character like the Mario Brothers. Like just do it like a... <laughs> I just want to go in and make sounds like that. Like a little yeah, Jawa or something. Oh yeah, I'd like to play a, a Jawa in a Star Wars video game. Oh, Mickey! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> what? Star Wars fans. I'm actually wearing a Millennium Falcon uh, clips right now. Thanks to one of my friends. Thank you very much. Appreciate you and schnell back to Germany, but not too schnell. <laughs> Dank, danke schön, danke. Hi! Hello. First off, I wanted to say that I was super excited. I found out, like, from your family that you were going to this convention, and I, like, freaked out. And so, before we got caught up on the stage for the karaoke, I turned around and was like, dude, imagine if David came out on stage and surprised, like, the audience. And then we get caught up in mid-song, and you, like, popped out of nowhere. These were my Swifties from last night. Oh! Impressive. They were, they were the ones that, and I, and I came, I just sort of stealthily came on stage, and uh, their reaction, their, their double take was amazing. They were just like, we are never, never going back to home, what the? <laughs> it was like they saw the Yeti, it was like big friend. They just entered the stage. So I didn't, I didn't argue too much. No, I just want to let you know that that made like my entire movie. Like, I love it. Thank you so much. Well, that's why we do it because you get so, we get so much out of your energy too. Like it's really, I hope, such a reciprocal gift back and forth between y'all. You definitely like kick it on stage, dancing, everything. But it's awesome. you're a great dancer. Well, listen, the music moves me. What can I tell you? I uh, I, I revert to my young teen twenty self when I was a musical theater dancer. Hoofing it on stage, and I, I just my hips don't lie. <laughs> and my my joints lie later that night, but my hips. I mean, it's at home with me now. That was this gentleman in the front. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, did you have a question as, as, as well as being a rock star last night? Um, my question. Speaking of Hallmark, my question is: If Mick and Catch were to star in a Hallmark movie, what would the plot? Okay. <laughs> so. In a very special catchmas, we, um, well, of course, Mick would be the single dad who's running a bread and breakfast somewhere in the mountains. Catch is thinking of retiring from all the murdering. But he's on one last quest to go find Krampus in the mountains of Austria. It's almost Christmas time, and the the Krampus Festival is in full, full right. Now, my German friend probably knows all about Krampus in, in Austria, Germany. Do we? Do you know about Krampus? Yeah. You're all, you're all aware now. Did they ever do a Krampus episode on Supernatural? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. This is bloody fantastic. I only learned about Krampus four years ago, and I was like, where has this been my whole life? I mean, not just a lump of coal in your stocking. But a hairy horned beast from hell comes to take naughty children and beat them with sticks and put them in a bag. I mean, like, Merry Christmas, the Austrians are doing it right. Let me tell you. You will behave or Krampus will come kill you and take you away. Now, get you your name to have me with sing happy songs. Um, but of course, in the midst of this monster, epic monster fight, some. Uh, Eggnog and rum is drunk while it's tricking the Christmas tree and catching the look deeply into each other's eyes and realize forgiveness and redemption is the only way. And a nice bit of spit of me by the fireplace. See, I know I can lose your father, make you are, that's right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Shalom. Hello, is that Carrie? Hi, Carrie. And all my old mates here are coming up for questions. I love it. Um, I didn't really have any questions, so what's your favorite Hallmark movie? Oh. 
Really? Are you a five more minutes uh, person down here? Well, thank you very much. Oh, and anyone who's seen one of my panels before knows that a favorite question is extremely difficult for me because I, um, I really do believe in living in the now, living in the present. I will tell you, here's what I'll do though. The, the, the movie that most people say that they love, it's kind of a tie when they come to my uh, autograph table. Um, it's one called uh, Bramble House Christmas. Or a really old school, one of my first ones. In fact, the first Christmas movie I did, a uh, movie called Dear Santa. And uh, so if you haven't seen those two, that's what, uh, that's what the people are watching. You know what I love? at my, my table too, like, because I always love to do this Venn diagram too. There are way more Hallmark fans and Supernatural fans that Venn diagram is way more close than you would think. You would, I would have thought there would have been, you know, monster horror people and then like, sappy love Christmas movies over here. Apparently, and you're giggling down here, you're like, I'm in that Venn diagram. Um, but uh, you know what I love is the men who come to my table with a little uh, DVD cover. It's like they're selling me drugs. <laughs> I'm just like, hey bro, yeah, I know man, yeah, catch you. Could you sound my Christmas tree? <laughs> That's adorable. Come out of the closet, men who love Christmas movies. Yes. Come on. Yo, hey, who's got a man in their life that likes Christmas movies? Yeah, she's having it. She's having it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are the clothes. Okay. Bye, Kerry. I'll tell you later. Hi. Hi. My name is Tina. I love you. Hi, Tina. I love you back. <laughs> um, so I actually saw you in New Jersey this year, and you were wearing this tracksuit that was just epic. Oh. Um, and I was just wondering what your favorite outfit that you've worn to a con is, and if you have any like hopes to do any like really big ones in the future. Like major major cosplay? Either like cosplay or just like, you know, fun outfits that you enjoy wearing that you find are like fun for you. Yes. Um, well, I do, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I sort of will do a casual just jeans and t-shirt day. And I always like to bring the catch Jason to full suit. I feel like I kind of leaned into it early and I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. And it's nice to get photos in it. But in Toronto in 2019, I, uh, I dressed up as a full Mountie uh, uniform because it was kind of like a full, it's kind of a full circle for me coming back to Canadian. I, I, I was born in Canada, and so I was just like, you know. Um, and then I took this back in my social media days. I took a picture of me in the full Mountie suit without pants. So somewhere on the internet, there's a picture of me as a full dressed Mountie but without pants. Who knew I was be predicting Zoom uh, phone calls uh, from uh, the next two years? <laughs> or Jeffrey Tubin? I don't know. You, you decide. Too soon? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're in DC. You're like, that's the political class. Um, so that was really fun. And then uh, I really enjoyed I, I went when I went to Germany, actually, uh, just a few months ago in May. I went to. I didn't want to do like sort of a, a campy version of Later Husband. So I, and I, I, and I talked to many Germans online before I went over there. And so I don't know if you know this, but Bavaria is a very separate, distinct region of Germany. And one of the things that a lot of Germans don't like is to be like, don't go to our Later Husband. It's Bavaria only. I was like, okay, I'm easy. I know. Canadians don't all wear like denim tuxedos either. It's okay. Um, but, so what I did was, I really researched like the top end, really uh, traditional, true, honoring later was. I went to this really fancy store in Munich, and I bought this really high end. Do you know that you can buy lederhosen? Like the shorts, the, 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 the high shorts, up to 4,000 euros. This guy, and he knew he had like a like a Hollywood actor on his hands. He was like, oh, I'd like to buy some later on, please. Like, can I help him? He's like, oh, yes, well, you have the best stuff for you. And his name was Funk, and he gave me the app. And he's like, tight is right. <laughs> and he literally was like six inches taller than me. And he's like grabbing me by the lapels, and he's like moving me around the whole thing. He's like, you will sit down, and we put the woman. Tight is right. And I was like, oh, 
Oh my goodness. Like this is my schnitzel. It's, it's, it's compressing in the layer. But he had these elk layers in with all the, they, they, they make the, the bones and they used to hand embroider and they, they used the antler and these beautiful buttons and stuff. It was like gorgeous. But I was like, I mean, 4,000 bucks for a cosplay, let's be honest. So I went high end enough. That was really fun because it was like all the Germans that were like sort of, you know, commiserating that I was going to wear later when they actually saw the high quality stuff and the nice vest. And it was like, it was a big celebration. I feel like I brought Germany together by wearing, by wearing short pants, is what I'm saying. But traditional short pants. So that was really fun. Because I got to learn about the culture too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. My name's Marty. Hi, Marty. Um, first off, I have a new lady with me. She just celebrated her 16th birthday last Saturday. She wish Laura a happy birthday. What's her name? Laura. Laura. Laura, happy 16th. She's in the back, somewhere in the back. Laura, happy birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, Laura. Happy birthday, Laura. What was Thank you very much. My favorite, my favorite is cookie cutter Christmas. Really? Cookie cutter Christmas? The intrigue of a stolen cookie recipe. Oh my goodness. If Catch got a piece of that action, it would be. Thank you. Oh, uh, this show? Well, let me tell you something, and I'm sure you've heard this if you've been coming to these before. Um, it all comes from the top. And Jared and Jensen are the most collegial, collegiate gentlemen and hosts on any TV show. You ask any of us actors when we were welcomed on day one, they got to know who I was, were curious, kind, inclusive, of the game. Everything changes after that. You're like, oh my gosh. Why, thank you. And we just started having chats in between takes and just got to know each other as human beings. And their kindness and their generosity trickles down from the top and, and all the leadership at the top. So, um, my goodness, I mean, if I can ever pay it forward, I've been in lead on shows before and always tried to do that, but knowing what they did to every new guest star and co star that came. They're legends in Vancouver, by the way. All, all the local actors there were just like, if you get a chance to work on Supernatural, the culture of that show is just fantastic. So, I actually didn't have to do much other than be prepared, be polite, do my job. That's how I do my work in general. And then when you had these southern gentlemen just welcome me in, and I know what a true job is. <laughs> So does Catch, and he pronounces it correctly, by the way. I'll have you know. Um, but thank you so much, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, any of these, you hear stories all the time about uh, casts being very collegial and friendly and uh, warm. And, and sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. But with this show, let me tell you, it was really true. We have a collection of the kindest, smartest, funniest, most giving, community based individuals, not just from the top down, but as a group, we are so fortunate. And I hope that translates to you guys. I, get, I hope that you get that family feel from the show, and that it, it, it uh, cause we, we definitely get it from y'all, so we're, we're super grateful for that. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I don't know if you've been asked this before, but this is my first con. Hey, <laughs> welcome to your first con, everybody. Who else is their first con? post-pandemic life right there, well, welcome. You gotta get at it, right? You're like, time's wasted. Well, welcome, I love it. We have literally been doing 50-50s on all these cons, so welcome, I hope you enjoy the circus. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you how you came to be on the show and what your first impression of your character was. Uh, great question. Um, so I had known about Supernatural, everyone knew about Supernatural in the business, especially if you were uh, in Canada part-time like I was. Um, 
my home was in LA when I, I was keeping a place in Vancouver at the time. And I got this audition, like any other audition, in the uh, late spring of 2017. See, COVID has screwed up my whole sense of time. I was saying this the other day. Who's still doing last year for 2019? Right? But like, yeah, I remember last year, yeah, it was three years ago, dude. Relax. I was like, what? So I guess I've been on the show for five or six years, I guess. Would have been something like that. Um, and it was just, I got the call from my agent, and it was only supposed to be like a few lines for three episodes. And I just went in, and originally they wanted it as a cock in East End London or Biker. So the whole color of catch was uh, was uh, totally different too. I went in like all messed up with a beard and a leather jacket, and I was like, you wrong. They want you to be that bar. I was like, it is fun. I was spending that. And that was my first audition on tape, I didn't see anyone for it. Because I was actually shooting a Christmas movie at the time. Believe it or not. And then I didn't hear anything, I forgot totally about it. Then they gave me new pages three weeks later. And I was literally doing night shoots, and it was my last night shoot on a movie with Danica McKellar called My Christmas Dream, I'll never forget it. And when you're doing night shoots, night shoots are all turned around. And, you know, it's just weird. Anyone who's worked night shifts, you know, like, it's your body, and it just takes a while to get in that, that schedule. Yeah, and so we were shooting at this really cool mall, high-end department store in Vancouver. And I got the call back. So I had, I had to start learning my size for the call back. And they were totally different. But I'm shooting at the same time, at night, and I'm getting the fox I was thinking about it because it was making me so nervous. And I was like, oh, this is cool, this is incredible. And then they said, no, and they said, forget everything you learned before in your tape. They want a posh English gentleman and James Bond of the monster world. And I was like, and they want you there at 10. And the movie was wrapping at 7 a.m. So I'm like, art me, Jesus, Murphy. And then you just kind of go in, you're like, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. I was taking power naps everywhere I could in my trailer. I was like, okay, I got a tuxedo. This tuxedo, actually. This is the same tuxedo I got my The World of Kitchen, by the way. Still fits, sort of. Um, but, uh, and I just remember, I just in between takes on the movie, um, it wasn't a heavy dialogue lift, so I was able to keep studying, 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 studying. Power naps in my trailer, went home, showered, changed, had another 40 minute power nap, got in the car, had the lines rolling, and then I was just doing my posh English accent. Got to the audition, it was just me there. So I was like, oh, maybe this is helpful. And right before I went in the door, I just said to myself, took a deep breath, and I was just like, Paul, James, Paul. <laughs> and I walked in, and now I'm here to talk to you. <laughs> Pretty great. Pretty great. Yeah, I'll never forget it. Like, you kind of give me shivers because when you actually tell the story, you're sort of like, you don't think of, you can't think of the future, you can't think what it's going to become. And then they just kept giving me better episodes and better episodes and more fun to play. And I was like, wow. And then, and now here I am talking to all you lovely people. So you just never know. You just do your best, forget the rest. Forgiveness and redemption is real, folks. Thank you. Appreciate That's it. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm a Scotty McCurry fan, too. I've seen him. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Um, my question is, though, is this my first time and um, I was wondering if you had any advice for me about getting into the show. Were you at karaoke last night? Yes, I was. Was that you rocking? Um, I was in the second row. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm seeing faces already. Sorry, what was your voice? I apologize. Uh, do you have any memories from your first con? Were you scared or nervous or excited? Yeah, like. I was, I was all those things. So she asked me what, what experiences from my first convention. I had extra special anxiety because my first convention was in the UK in a place called Blackpool. And I was like, oh shit, this is where the rubber hits the road on this accent here. <laughs> I was like, big thing for me was like, would I be able to pass with anyone's audience? And uh, you know, there was some nitpickers, but so many people came up to me at the autograph table in question. They were like, 
Oh no, we didn't know you already finished that. Oh, so I mean that for me was the excitement. It was like, did I pass with an English audience? Because I do have uh, British roots in my family, and, and uh, I've said this before, Hans, but Ketch's very posh accent is based on my Uncle Dave, who's one of the last of the three percent of England who actually speak with a sort of toffee-nosed, you know, Arpy accent and all that, right? Cambridge and all that. Yeah, she's a chinwax. He literally is a chinwag. He's like, right, right. Good, good. Um, he's a lovely man. Um, but so, yeah, that was an incredible experience, but it was also... Uh, anyone here went to the Blackpool convention in the UK? Did you ever meet someone who went to that convention? Uh, it was it was a bit of a shit show. Uh, things didn't go well. Some people didn't get paid, and the whole the company went belly up, and a lot of people didn't get the money back. So that was my first experience with conventions. But I think what really was so fun was was getting to be here with Adam and we have such um, we had such an instant rapport as friends and as sort of our banter or whatever so when we, are, when we do our panels together there's just something that happens and there's just this it reminds me because I started out off in the comedy clubs in Toronto that's how I started my career and so doing sketch and improv and doing these panels sort of reminds me of hosting and and improv and all that stuff too. So it's kind of been a really nice full circle. And then to have everyone be so nice and interested, it's, yeah, a real blessing. So thanks. Appreciate that. Welcome. First time. Excellent. What's that? Oh, why, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm um, just in Adam's after accent to be the Irish representative for tonight. So uh, I wanted to ask you if you have any favorite memory from set. Any favorite memories from set? Um, again, the favorite question, not, 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 to, not to be a hater, but every day I was going to work on this show. You know, we talk about this, you know, practicing gratitude and, and living in the now and being present. I really, I really do believe in that practice because we're also taught it in, in uh, disciplines of acting. He's not trying to pre-plan too much, do your homework, and then show up, and then let it go. Um, so every day on this show was such an adventure of collaboration and surprise and challenge for me. It was like by far the most challenging role I've ever played. And the one I worked the hardest on. Um, but I just, I just remember so much the laughter and the camaraderie. Um, do, 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 anyone here? Do you know the sort of uh, the... The motorcycle helmet story? Perfect, great, you know. So this is memorable. This also speaks to just how fun Jared and Jensen are. And like, everyone's asking about pranks and stuff, but just the, the collegiate commun communality of the, uh, is that a word? Um, no. um, community. So, Kesh had to ride a motorcycle and had to wear a motorcycle helmet. David Hayden Jones, the actor, has a giant head, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Like a really big hat size. Any men out there who know hat sizes, seven and three quarters don't. It's very deep. So what happens with hats and headgear in film and TV is they fall through the cracks because props thinks wardrobe has it handled and wardrobe thinks props has it handled. And anytime you're in any department in any company and the other you think the other department has it handled, you're fucked. Because it slips through the cracks. So the director, I think it was called the, the Raid, and we all come back to the Men of Letters bunker and da 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 da, all these things. And Ketch was supposed to have this epic, uh, pulls his motorcycle in and whips off his helmet, does the Farrah Fawcett hair, it's perfect. And the helmet comes to me, and it really, it looks like a yarmulke meets a beanie on the top of my head. It literally, it was like, it, I was like, are you pranking me? Is this a child's helmet? What's happening here? So, the director had planned this very beautiful crane shot to reveal me coming up and like doing the sort of saddle in the bike and taking the helmet off and reporting it to, to Mick and Dean and the baby coming in right behind. But it all hinged with me taking the helmet off. And so once I couldn't even put a helmet on, it was a bit of a problem. So Jared gets wind of this, right? And you know how Jared has that big, robust, hearty laugh when something really tickles him? 
He's like, oh, we can't get, we can't get a helmet big enough for Dave. His head's too big. And he's just like ripping me in front of, but like in a hilarious way, like I'm being roasted. He pulls up on his phone, uh, Rick Moranis as Dark Helmet from Spaceballs. <laughs> And he's like, props, get to the courtroom, can we get this? Can we get this for Hayden Jones? And, and of course we shot around and we made it work, but like that is the sort of ball busting and camaraderie and, and fun that we would every, had every time. And no one, everyone taking the work seriously, but not themselves seriously. And like, all fun, all play, all work, no egos. So, that's a happy memory right there. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, I am, uh, I am super specific with wardrobe now anytime there's a hat, thanks to uh, the Dark Helmet episode on Supernatural. Hi! Hi, I'm Falcon. Um, and my question is, what is one thing that you can take from catch to bring into your life and what does this make sense to you? So let me just make sure I got this straight. What one thing I can take from catch into my life? Yep. Not the murdering. <laughs> That's just a, that's a good lesson for life. Do less murder. Um, this is gonna sound corny and be like a callback, but there's there's still people who can't stand Cat sitting his terrible character, boo boo boo. There's people who are like, I liked it from the beginning, I liked the bad boys, and there were people like, yeah, we, we bought the whole redemption journey. See where I'm going with this? <laughs> But, that whole thing of when he has some of his admissions, when you're starting to peel back the conditioning and the ideology and the independent thinking. Um, I'm a big believer in see the individual, not the group. See, uh, be a rational, pragmatic thinker, be kind. was definitely not kind, but I think he was beginning at the very, very end before he got his heart ripped out. Um, I always say, catch through a heart, just have it ripped out right after he drew it. But the thing that really sums up his own redemption and whether anyone else saw it, and that's why I love that, that the fact he died so sadly and alone, stripped of ego, stripped of his nice suits and his car, he's in this sad little hospital gown, all alone. And I love that poetic, because no one except him and the universe heard him say, I have to go help my friends. And I think that's the first time that he ever really knew what friendship was, and it was thanks to the Brotherhood of Sam and me allowing him back in. So that's what I take away. You know? Be good to your friends. Be good to your friends. Right? Make the right choice. Even if it's at the end of your life where you're gonna get beaten up by a demon and have your heart ripped out of you. Because that happens. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Shiar, first time con so. First time con give us a love. How's it going so far? It's going so good. Good, good, good. Yeah. People are great, aren't they? Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so, I don't know, I can just vibe from you. Have you watched Glee? Have I what? Watched Glee. Watch Glee? The show. Of course I watched Glee. One of my best friends was on Glee. Really? Yeah. Jessica Gilsig, I knew her from, uh, she was like the, the, the woman school teacher for a while there. She was unbelievable. She's been on everything. She was like the old, one of the older ones. But can I tell you what, if you're getting that sort of musical theater vibe jazz hands off me, let me tell you something. And this is going to be cool for the family. Uh, who here is watching, some, who's got kids or is watching Zombies 1, 2, and 3 on Disney Plus? Yes. Oh my god, do it not the zombies. Oh my goodness, it, it's so great. And it's because it, it, it gets me back to my musical theater days where that's how I started. I was 16 when I got my first job and it was all jazz and hip hop and all the things. So like Glee was, yeah, I was just, I love it. I love the first season. I didn't follow it much after that. But you probably have a question I'm speaking before oh, yeah. you got to ask. Uh, since you watched it, what character do you like, feel like resonates most with the Oh gosh. Um, it's been so long since I watched it, and then again, it was sort of a, it was a passive watching, but um, who, I, I, you know, I really identified, honestly, with the, 
the teacher, what's his name? The, like the... Yeah. yeah, because I was like, I was a little too old to be watching Glee in some ways. But I was also like, I just loved, and he also had curly hair, and I had like crazy curly hair, and I was like, I could be a teacher of like, because it was, it was like giving back. And now that my daughter is so obsessed with Zombies 1, 2, and 3, I have now become obsessed with Zombies 1, 2, and 3. And how fun to have Megan being like, coming into the, the family fold, the Zombies fans. I was like, oh my god. I was like, that's mattering. I want to check out the Zombies 1, 2, and 3 people. Get it. But it's like, you know what's fun for me as a, like a dad uh, who loves to dance and whose joints are failing, so I better get as much dancing in as I can, is she just started hip-hop class. So now we're learning routines from zombies together as father and daughter, and it just ties everything together. So it's really fun. I love it. So yeah, you're correct. I definitely have jazz hands better do. It's in. <laughs> Appreciate your question. Thank you. First convention, everybody, say hello! <laughs> What's that? Dance. You saw me dance? We danced. Oh, we danced! Was this you down here? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, my lady. That was very lovely. Um, how did you decide to play the Arctic Ripple Catch to the catch that helped the boys at the end? How did I decide to? Yeah. So, in terms of the art.